Okay. Our next speaker is a good student who is very, uh, who study hard in his study. Um, he can tell us uh, why uh, euthanasia should be uh, legalized. Um, please have you welcome uh, Claude. It's been thought that the past is a fearsome place, one that reveals your faults as well as your mistakes. They say not to dwell on such a thing, such a frightening topic. However, I believe that it's the future that is truly terrifying. I do not want to die, but I am dying, and I want to die on my own terms. A quote by Brittany Maynard, a 29-year-old at her time of death. The cause? An incurable brain tumor. She was just newly married, their anniversary just having passed when the diagnosis was given. There was no cure and certainly no time to waste. There were, of course, treatments in order to prolong her life. However, they were at the cost of her hair, much of her personality, and many of her cognitive abilities. She didn't want this to be her family's last memory of her. But there was a solution, death with dignity, euthanasia, a practice that has been supported by nine developed countries and eight US states. While the process to be able to do so, moving to a place in which it was legalized, finding a new physician, getting a new driver's license, etc., were numerous, the results were, in Maynard's opinion, well worth it. She was able to say her final goodbyes. Her whole family was there. And she was able to die a more peaceful death than she would have ever hoped for since her diagnosis. There are so many things that we cannot fully appreciate until they've actually happened. I, for one, cannot really appreciate summer vacation until we're starting school just a few days later. I find it hard to recognize just how close we are to graduating, to walking through those gym doors, wearing all our caps and all our gowns. And it is so difficult to realize just how wonderful it is to have a healthy, prosperous life until the grave reality of death is right around the corner. The main arguments against euthanasia are religious ones. They say that those who advocate for such a topic do not appreciate life, that we do not have the authority to take life, that life is simply too valuable. And some of it can be good advice. However, to a sick, fearful, dying human being? <laughs> I don't think so. A 49-year-old by the name of Tracy Snelling was diagnosed with a severe stomach cancer. Though with chemo and surgery, she should have been okay. She should have been able to survive it. Should have. Instead, the cancer rapidly spread. She lasted right up to her wedding day before she was permanently hospitalized. Her, her husband, a good man, was always there right alongside her till death do them part, ready to support whatever decisions she made about her life. Though when euthanasia seemed like their best bet, their best option, it was unfortunately too late. She was too sick to do the flight to Switzerland in which it was legalized. No, all she could do was face the pain until finally she died crying out in her husband's arms. They say that we do not appreciate life, that we do not have the authority to take life, that life is simply too valuable. <laughs> do you still think that it's good advice? A final story that I want to tell you all today is one of a woman by the name of Sandy Bryden. She lived to 57 years. Two years prior to her last, she was diagnosed with a tumor in her abdomen. She immediately sought out intensive chemotherapy, having some very clear goals in mind. And well, <laughs> she made them. She was able to not only see the wedding of her son, 
but also the birth of her granddaughter. However, the thought of her impending death, knowing that it could happen at any given time, was almost unbearable. The end was ever present in Brighton's mind. Would it be painful? Could it be controlled? At what time would the bomb drop? <sighs> Euthanasia was her saving grace, allowing her to spend the rest of her final known moments happily and peacefully with her family by her side. It allowed her to enjoy the rest of her life. And in her words, for me, euthanasia isn't about dying. It's about living. It's human nature for us to want to cling on to life. We none of us want to lose anything that's cherished, but when it comes to matters like these, the choice is not up to us. We may so desperately want to hold on to those memories and feelings of the past, but our loved ones may want to let go of those hurts and those pains of the future, and we cannot take away that right from them. Because after all, if you love someone, you have to be willing to let them go.